Hello, this is Mistress Amethyst from Voiced by Amethyst on Patreon, and I'm going to be reading a very sexy story written by an anonymous patron called Forced Experiment. Part 1 So ladies, I hope everything was clear. Your skills as MDs was and will be very useful for our goals. Any questions? Great. You went to the room to find some of your female colleagues already there. Everyone is just casually talking until the woman you haven't noticed yet addresses you. Welcome, Doctor. I'm happy you could join us. Please have a seat. Her look caught you unprepared. Tall brunette, clear and deep green eyes, wearing a tight black top with an almost inappropriate low cut, a crystal pendant laying teasingly close to her cleavage, Tight black pants that left no doubt as for her perfectly figured ass and thighs. Her name tag showed Lila, educator. You have seen some beautiful women from drug companies before. But she was something else. Her looks were almost casual. Like she came here to work, physical work, not just trying to look pretty to sell you something. It takes you a second to shake it off, and you get yourself together to sit down and join the lecture. So as I was saying, the sperm collected will be tested and kept cool for further research, and the subjects, of course, will be monitored both by a physician and a psychologist. At this point, you're still not sure what this meeting is all about. You pick up a brochure from the table saying, Biosoc, Biological Tools for Social Change. What? This is some weird stuff. Doctor? Don't worry, I will fill you up later about the details you missed. Oh, I haven't offered you, but there's some water over there. You look like you need some. She is right. It is a hot day, and for some reason the air conditioning in the room wasn't working. You stand up, gulp down two cups of water, and sit back down makes you feel better. She continues talking for a few more minutes. Things sound weirder. Good now. I would like to ask you something, would you? You nod. Would you like to be a part of our experiment? We are looking for men willing to lose some of their control to women around them. What? I don't get it. And why asking me here in front of everyone, you protest? Starting to grin, she answers. Well, actually, this is part of the experiment already. So you say you are unwilling to participate? No, I do not. This whole thing looks very weird. What's going on here? Why are you all smiling at me like that? Darling, they smile because you just put yourself on the unwilling participants group of our research, which, to be honest with you, is much more exciting both personally and scientifically. And the fun part is that you will not remember this conversation since the drug was already working when I asked you this question. Isn't that great? Okay, I'm out of here, you try to protest. 
But as you try to stand up, you feel like the room suddenly starts spinning. Unable to stand, you fall back into your chair. Oh, baby, you are not out yet, but you soon will be. Girls, get ready now. What could it be? Oh, the water. You have been drugged. You try to mumble a question. Shh, don't worry, dear. You are safe with us. Trust them. They are doctors. <laughs> she said, laughing from her own joke. At this point, you can only move your head to the side. Your female colleagues are putting on medical gloves and preparing syringes. Shit, this is a sedative. You recognize this bottle. Damn. Your vision starts to go blurry. Their voices become distant. Your last sight is Valerie, one of your colleagues getting close to your face, wearing a medical mask, emphasizing her deep blue eyes, looking directly into your eyes, smiling and saying, I just love this part when they doze off. Good night, slave. Do we have vein access? Good. Give him another dose so we can work quietly. Very good. The women worked fast and coordinated. It wasn't their first time doing it, obviously. At once, they delivered the needed dose of sedative to the poor, now very cooperative subject, making sure he won't be any trouble anytime soon. One of the women took off his shirt, and then two of them lifted him so a third one could remove his pants and underwear. The special table was already in the room. The sedated man was put face down on the device, locking down his torso, bended forward, ass exposed, legs spread apart and bound. Hands to his sides, also bound. He was ready. One doctor cleaned his anus, making it ready for what is to come. Prostate stimulator, please. She was handed a C-shaped device and skillfully put it inside. She turned it on. It started to vibrate. In less than two minutes... Sperm shot out from the subject's penis into a readily prepared container. The device was pulled out. Magnetic plug? she asked. The doctor now lubed another similar device and pushed it gently into place, just touching the prostate. The outer end of the plug was almost flat, making it more difficult to be pulled out by the subject themselves. It could be pulled by a magnet if needed. It is a remotely controlled vibrator, capable of enforcing ejaculation in one to two and a half minutes, depending on the subject. Done. Let's do the front. With the press of a button... The table straightened and pulled up, exposing the subjects completely front and back, like being crucified. Nice body. I love working on these young fellows, said one of the doctors, while running her gloved hand gently down his chest to his groin, grabbing his balls. His head, of course, still fallen forward, Eyes closed in complete oblivion. 
They are cute when they are sedated, aren't they? Well, hopefully when this project is done, sedation won't be necessary anymore. Cage A tight metal cage was installed and locked on the subject's cock. This cage could deliver a painful electric shock, controlled remotely. This was the second tool of physical control needed to be installed. We are done. Dress him up. Just as fast as unrobing him, the team dressed their new, soon-to-be slave subject back up, set him down back in his place, took their former positions and waited for him to wake up. You slowly open your eyes. You are in a conference room. All around is your female colleagues. Only Valerie is near you holding a flashlight in front of you, checking your pupils. What happened? You ask, groggy. It seems that you fainted, dear. Maybe you were dehydrated. It's very hot in here indeed. Weird. It never happened to me before. Always a first time. Would you like to go rest? No, no, I'm fine. How long was I out for? No more than a minute, I guess. Okay, really weird. Your body feels weird, especially your groin and ass. But you can't address it now in public. Okay, I think we are ready to start now, aren't we? Everyone nodded, smiling, except you. With a puzzled look, you ask, Start what? Your training as an obedient man, as a slave of all women. What the fuck? Yes. You are now a part of a nationwide experiment of re-education. Take off your shirt. No, and you are crazy, and I am out. You stood up to leave and suddenly feel a horrible pain in your groin. You fall to your knees from the pain. I said, take off your shirt, slave. I am not a slave, and I... Fuck! What is that? You grab your groin and feel something hard around your cock. That, my boy, is a cock cage. I can activate it from very far away. You need not know more. And you do need to know that this is only a tool to break you a little before the real conditioning could begin. Being reluctant to participate in our program only meant that we have some more steps to complete first. Woman, I will not... Ah! They all laughed as you screamed in pain. Boy, take your shirt off or I will fry your wiener for good. Do it now. Three, two... Okay, 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 I'll take it off, you sick pervert. Ah, why? You shall not speak to me disrespectfully, slave. Now get topless already. I'm getting bored. You take off your shirt in front of everyone, seeing their gazes checking you out. That was embarrassing and arousing at the same time. As your cock starts growing, you get a painful reminder of your new cock cage holding you so tight. Oh, what's the matter, boy? I see you are twitching and squirming. Is your little fellow trying to grow? 
It seems like you like this situation more than you're willing to admit, Lila said, smiling at your helpless response. Now, boy, get up and sit on this couch right here. You do as she said. You really don't want another zap to your groin. Good boy. Valerie and the other women stood up and approached you, holding your hands and feet down as the couch automatically grabs your wrists and ankles in place. Hey, what's going on here? You ask in a bit of horror. Relax, boy. We just don't want you to run away while the program is working, Valerie said. Programming? What programming? Shh, just be patient, slave. I am not a slave. Jolt to your penis again. Ah! As Lila swings the remote back and forth in front of your eyes, she says softly, not yet, my boy, but you will. Suddenly, Valerie pushes your head back into the couch, and the couch locks it as well. You can't move your arms and legs, can't turn your head around. Your cock is locked and your ass feels weird still. But you are surprisingly comfortable, half lying on the couch. Okay, Valerie, put it on him. Valerie gently places a pair of what looks like soft, high-quality headphones on your ears. The moment she does, the world goes mute. You can only see the women move their mouths but no sound comes through. Then, all of a sudden, you hear a voice. A woman's voice. It feels like it comes from within your own head. Hello, slave. I am Mistress Amethyst, and I am going to program you to become an obedient and submissive slave to all women. Resisting me is useless. Many men, like you, already fell under my control, and you will be no different. Lila, Valerie, and your other colleagues start to leave the room. Layla is the last one left, and just before she went out, she looks right at you, blows you a kiss. Last. Turns off the light, and locks the door behind her as she leaves. How long would they keep you here, you wonder? Deep down, the soothing voice of Mistress Amethyst continued. Yes, even if you don't listen to me consciously, your subconscious will absorb my words. That's it. You're getting more and more relaxed. My voice is so easy to listen to. You have nothing else to do but listen to me. Listen to me. Now. Good boy. Can you feel how your body is becoming heavier and heavier as I speak? Of course you do. Every word you hear is making you more and more relaxed. The humming sound you hear 
is subliminal programming. I am telling you this so that you know you can't avoid falling deep down for me very soon. She is right. You do start to feel heavy and sleepy. But how? Will you really wake up as a slave? How is it possible? Your mind starts to feel fuzzy as her words become distant. Are you drugged again? Then a moment of clear thought, you hear her say suddenly, Sleep. Everything shuts down. This has been a patron written script voiced by Mistress Amethyst of Patreon as well as DeepSurrender.com. If you have an erotic story or sexy hypnosis script that you'd like to have voiced by Amethyst, go to Patreon.com slash Voiced by Amethyst to pledge and participate.